أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقطة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We're going to be starting a review series inshallah on the code evolved um, class by Sheikh Yasir Bridjas that we hosted here in Seattle uh, on November 13th through 15th so inshallah we'll be going through the notes and sort of presenting them in an abbreviated format to help you review the material and prepare for the test uh, hopefully these are helpful to you so we'll start in this video just by reviewing the material from the Friday night session okay so we started by um, defining some of the major topics that we'll be talking about so first of all we talked about just the importance of knowledge in general and that human beings were sort of created in a state of ignorance and not of knowledge at their at their creation so um, as we are taught in surah an-nahl i just want to play this for you first <laughs> So we're taught that Allah brought us from the rooms of our mothers and knew, knowing nothing and then gave us hearing, then sight and hearts to make to make us thankful. So we talked about how the importance of even the order of the of these senses. So hearing is sort of thought to be the first sense that we are given because as we know that even when we're in our mom our mother's wombs we can hear um, voices, especially our mother's voice. And then after we pass away we know that in the grave we'll be we'll be able to hear the the sounds of the footsteps of the people leaving the grave. So it's sort of the first sight or excuse me, the first sense that we uh, receive and the last that is taken away from us after our death. Um, in addition, we are told in many ahadith that the seeking of knowledge is an obligation for every Muslim and knowledge, seeking knowledge should be an instrument, not just a goal in itself. So it should be something that we use in order to reach the ultimate goal of worshiping Allah and to seek his pleasure and reward. Okay, so there are also different divisions of knowledge and of the Islamic sciences that are important for us to define. So the two main categories that we talked about in class are ulum al ghayat and ulum al wasail. So the first category, ghayat, is referring to sciences that um, studying of which are a purpose and a goals goals within them in and of themselves. So for example, studying the Quran, the Sunnah, aqidah, fiqh, and akhlaq are things that we should study for the purpose of just studying them, not necessarily for like a secondary a secondary gain. Um, on the other hand, the second category, ulum al wasail, are like instrumental sciences, and so these are things that we study in order to better understand things of the first category. So, for example, we can study or examples of like ulum al wasail would be like studying tafsir or tajweed for the purpose of understanding Arabic better, which can be used to understand Quran, which is um, one of the examples of ulum al ghayat. Um, similarly, for hadith, studying usul al-fiqh or usul al-hadith for the purpose of understanding hadith would be um, like an instrumental science. And then fiqh is sort of kind of understood as like the master of all Islamic sciences because it can be both an instrument and a purpose. So it can be um, an instrument to help us understand other types, other parts of Islam on the other, on, as well as um, a purpose in and of itself because it can provide guidance to us as Muslims. So there's different types of fiqh that we talked about as well. So the main categories are fiqh um, as Fard al ayn and Fard al-Kifaya. So Fard al ayn refers to individual obligations. So these are like aspects of fiqh that we each should be responsible for knowing because they are things that we need to be able to do on an individual basis like fasting or, or praying or wudu or um, hajj. Like these are sort of fiqh, these are examples of fiqh that are Fard al ayn on us. On the other hand, there's a different type, which is for the kifaya, and these are like community obligations. So these are things that as a whole, as a community as a whole, we need to be responsible for fulfilling certain things and for knowing the fiqh of how to fulfill these actions, such as 
the funeral prayer for when people in our community die, but they're not obligations that fall on any one individual. It's more of a community obligation. Okay, so just to define some of the terminology that will be important in this course. Uh, so first one is fiqh. So literally, this term refer or means the true understanding of what's intended. In this context, it's referring to the science of dedu deducing Islamic laws from the, from its primary proofs. And then next, the term sharia literally actually means something that's like a straight path. Um, it was also historically used to refer to a stream or a river. Technically, and it's talking about the divine revelation and knowledge that's obtained from the Quran and Sunnah. And then tashri'a, tashri'a is um, talk, talking about legislation, and it's sort of referring to the establishing of the sharia, elucidating the rulings and canonizing the law. So then this brings us to our, our the question, what's the evolution of fiqh, which is the subtitle of the course. So the evolution of fiqh is, is um, talking about the studying historical studying of the historical factors that were behind the formulations of fiqh. So talking about the sources of the sharia, the emergence of the fuqaha, the various madahib that emerged and the various schools of thought and, talk, and studying how they evolved from the beginning of the revolution until today. So who are the Mushariri, who are the, which are the legislators or the lawmakers? So a few different categories of these. Obviously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our ultimate lawmaker. After that, we have the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was generally thought to be a, a lawmaker as well, but not an independent one. And so there are instances where he, can, he was fallible and able to make mistakes, but he was always corrected by Allah. And other categories, um, Sahaba, were they lawmakers? Well, generally thought that yes, they they were. They didn't initiate laws, but they were given a certain capacity of each they had in par some particular areas so that they could organize and use the rules of fiqh. So for example, um, Umar who after he conquered the lands of Persia, he imposed some agricultural taxes on the Persians. And so this is sort of like within his capacity of, of making certain laws. And then next, um, fuqaha, were they lawmakers? The answer is thought to be no. They're, they're the ones that are responsible for canonizing law and for making it into the form that we know it today, but they weren't actually the ones that came up with the original laws. Um, okay, and then sources of, of the Sharia is another important thing to understand. So different categories of this. Quran and Sunnah are, uh, without a doubt, unanimously agreed upon as being um, sources of legislation. Other sources that are generally agreed on are like ijma'a, which is sort of referring to like unanimity. So um, there is some disagreement of whose unanimity we accept, whether it's the sahaba or the ulama, but in general, the concept of unanimity is, can be a source of legislation. And then similarly, the yes, which is the process of intellectual reasoning can be a source of, of legislation if it comes from the appropriate people in the appropriate settings. And then other places that are generally not thought to be sources of legislation are like um, like individual statements of, of Sahabi or practices from the people of Medina. Other examples would be like Istishab, which is um, presumptions of continuity, or Maslaha, which is Considering considerations of public welfare, laws of previous prophets, and then over which refers to general customs of the area. These are not thought to be sources of Islamic law for us. So great, that brings us to the conclusion of our, um, basically the Friday night session. Next time, inshallah, we'll be beginning to talk about more of the historical evolution of fiqh. Uh, hope to see you back. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.